Hey guys, welcome back to Puppet Lauda, and welcome back to Steam Prison, where we are in a prison! Woo! <laughs> I guess this is where the game actually starts, right? Because we're in prison now, and I guess we're, it's like steampunk-ish? I don't know, whatever. Either way, we're gonna let Krimu live out her life in prison. <laughs> it's gonna suck. <sighs> Krimu tis... Uh, okay. Wh why? What? What? There was no malice in his voice. Those were simply the rules, and I wouldn't accomplish anything by protesting about them to him. I have to pick my battles. I can't rebel against everything. Only a child would use this chance to throw a tantrum. I told myself that it was a ridiculous rule and nodded in acceptance. Welp. I can still be true to myself. I walked away from the lift, swearing to myself that one someday I'll be back. I wasn't given any chance to rest during the hour-long walk it took to reach the headquarters of the hounds. I was handed a sheet of paper and a pen by a second man. It asked for some basic personal information to register me as the resident of the Sanctuary District. There is a space for my signature. Criminal control, huh? I sighed at the bureaucracy's division's name in the header of the sheet, uh, signed, and returned it. It's a weird sentence. As I wish? The man nodded impassively. So I just get to like wander around? <laughs>まずは空き家を探すことだな。どこに誰が住もうが、我らには関係ない。お前がどこで何をし、野垂れ地のが、それはお前の勝手。だが、ハウンズの邪魔立てはするなよ。Oh, great. Thanks. All right. I wanted to tell him what I thought of that, but it wouldn't have helped. I don't want to deal with the hounds anyways. I might run into- N No! <laughs> no, it can't be. A shiver ran down my back. Desperately hoping that I was mistaken, I turned around. It's him. Ugh. <laughs> I was prepared to run into him eventually, but I was hoping it would be a little later. Sir Berger took the sheet from his subordinate with a dirty grin. <sighs> he must have known. He was the commander of the hounds. He must have known I was coming. There's no other way to explain this timing. I hate you! Leave me alone! <laughs> Sir Berger, no. Berger grabbed me by the hair and pulled me violently towards him. Thanks. Let go of me. You give me ample warning for someone who hates me so much. Ow. Burger let go of my hair and pushed me back. <laughs> what is wrong with this dude? You're disgusting. Berger gave me a thin smile and walked away, disappearing into the building. 
His subordinate followed him. Men like that didn't frighten me. But now I'm powerless. If I resist, he'll kill me and that'll be the end of it. I needed to become powerful enough to fight him. No, first I need a place to sleep. I had to find shelter before nightfall. This sucks. I have to find a place to sleep. I walked and walked, looking everywhere, but I couldn't find somewhere to stay. I went over my memories of what I had seen during the observation. I couldn't remember anything like an inn. Besides, I have no money. I couldn't pay the innkeep. I paused to rest on the edge of the road. I never dreamed I'd have to find a home down here. My parents had been killed, I'd been framed for murder, and then I'd been exiled. And it all happened in such a short amount of time. Even now, I couldn't pause to regroup and gather my thoughts. The sun is even lower now. A few more hours, and the streets would be completely dark. Waiting until then would find make finding somewhere to sleep even more difficult. Well then, guess I'll keep looking. I ignored my fatigue and began to walk again. Oh shit. I turned off the main road and went down a narrow side street, emerging into a quiet area. The smell. It smelled of dirt, blood, mud, and dust. It was an unsettling smell, as if all things contaminated had been gathered in one place. Still, I don't have any choice. I had checked all the buildings along the main road and found nothing. Moving outwards to the buildings further away was the logical next step. I wonder if I'll find anything. I'd resolved to accept anything that offered shelter, but to no avail. The other residents were too preoccupied with their own survival to help me with mine. I need to find something. I didn't have the luxury of lapsing into contemplation or of being picky about what I was looking for. I couldn't stay clean and beautiful forever if I was going to survive. Despite my determination, no amount of searching offered a solution. As the darkness grew, so did my anxiety that I wouldn't find anything. I felt very alone. I put my hand to where I knew my pendant lay beneath my clothes. This place is so quiet, I probably shouldn't be here without a weapon. I was beginning to consider heading back to the main road. Huh? It's the child! A lively little boy with a large hat ran towards me. Um, and you are- Oh, that was you! He gave me a carefree smile. He seemed at ease, not at all like where, when he had been near Burger. I'm surprised you recognized me. I see. Your mother sounds like a great person. The boy laughed happily. Then he gave me a questioning look. Oh, right. You see, um, I'll be living here now. I avoided saying it, or I avoided saying that I was considered a criminal now. I didn't want to say it. The boy made a noise of acceptance and didn't press for further information. I felt a little better. Um, uh, no, I... I don't have a place to live yet. Oh, the child is so nice! Your house? Oh god, I don't, I don't know. I... Are you sure that's okay? Are you sure that's okay? What's your mother going to say? Children shouldn't gamble, but I guess we can give it a try. The boy smiled and began to walk away. I didn't expect to be saved from my situation by a child, but... 
When I'd still been a police officer in the Heights, all of this would have been unthinkable. I looked up at the shadow that split the sky in half. At the end of it was the home that had exiled me. I'm so far from where I was. My thoughts overwhelmed by the horrific day behind me. I followed the boy's small silhouette. You're so loud! <laughs> oh, it's not bad. Feeling uncertain, but optimistic, I followed the boy inside. This woman has the classic, like, mom's gonna die in an anime style. <laughs> the woman, presumably the boy's mother, was far younger than I'd expected. She was taller than I was and had soft black hair tied into a side knot. It looked to me like she probably had a meek and gentle personality. The boy looked at me in surprise. Then he smiled at his mother. <laughs> That's right. It was only then that I'd realized we'd never introduced ourselves. I'm Krimu. I had a feeling that I wasn't supposed to give my last name to the other residents either. The thought made me hesitate for a moment. In the end, I just repeated myself and gave a bow. His name is Merlot? Like the wine? <laughs> Re Realith and Merlot. Merlot gave a broad smile, then walked over to the water jug. He used the ladle to scoop out some and washed his hands. No, not chased out. I arrived today. Rayleth placed her head in her hand and smiled softly at me. Oh no, I couldn't bother you for dinner too. Thank you, but... I have nothing I can give you in return. I haven't told you anything about myself except my name. Sharing your food and home with me, isn't that reckless? Uh, I'm hungry. Oh. <laughs> Do they? え、仕事柄いろんな人を見てるからかしらね。あなたはしっかりしたこの世だから記憶でするでしょうけど、ちゃんと自立するまでは面倒を見させてちょうだい。<笑> Freelith put her hand on my shoulder encouragingly and went to the stove. I have a good feeling about her. I looked around the house as I washed my hands. There was only one door, no other rooms. I saw two small beds next to the wall. Sleeping, eating, being together, it all happened in this room. When my hands were washed, I sat down beside Merlot. Merlot gave a slightly disappointed laugh. Please don't mind me. She placed bean soup and some boiled potatoes on the cat or, or on the table. Boiled potatoes on the table. I almost said on the counter for some reason. Merlo began to eat, and I took this to mean that this was all the food there was. I'm just glad I get to eat. Although I was surprising, or I was surprised at the simplicity, my stomach responded to it like a kingly feast. I picked up a wooden spoon and began to eat. Oh. It's very good. 
Don't I mean it? いいのよ。あなた、いいお家のお嬢さんでしょ。あ。羊は名乗らなくても仕草で別れ物よ。それにこんな食事上では食べないものね。I'm serious though. It tastes great. It may be simple, but it's warm and it makes my heart feel full. I bowed my head, thanking her. I thought I'd never have a welcoming family meal again. I was truly happy and grateful. I'm glad Marlowe approached me. I remembered times where I'd eaten together with my parents and thanked my little savior. Yikes. The next time I glanced at the window, it was dark outside. Marlowe was asleep, having gone to bed right after dinner. He's already sleeping. I never had a sister or a brother. I never had the opportunity to see a sleeping child up close before. That's a weird sentence. <laughs> I'd watched him, studying the details. Relith laughed and began to wash the dishes. I wiped down the table, replying that sleep was when children did their growing. I was about to ask Relith a question, but yawned before I could. <laughs> I wanted to protest, but constantly resisting all her kindness would have been impolite as well. I nodded. Thank you very much. I crawled under the blanket and closed my eyes. Realist's bed was different to my own, stiff and hard, but I was so exhausted that I was already drifting off. I'm glad I found a place to sleep. Considering that I had been ready to accept any shelter I could find, things had worked out extremely well. I wasn't able to repay Relith yet, but I resolved to find a way to do so in the future. Hmm? Huh? I heard a soft sound and woke up. Is someone here? I squinted through half-closed eyes and saw that Merlot was still sleeping. His mother was no longer next to him, however. Raylith must have left. I wonder what she needs to do so late at night. Curious, I stood up and went outside. You shouldn't go- Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. Raylith. Rilith was standing outside the door. No, I just woke up. What are you doing here? Rilith was looking up at the sky. It was dark and opaque, its texture only interrupted by the even darker shape of the pillar supporting the heights. I see. Thrown into the depths? You came here from the heights too? Relith gave a wry smile, leaning against the wall of her home. Love? What the? Heck。That's horrible. <laughs> Useless piece of trash. <laughs> That's horrible. 
Maybe. Raylith looked at me in surprise. あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ
You had to get along with people to, in order to survive. That was even more true in the depths. Also, I realized that we're way over our time. Whoops, Daisy got too engrossed in the story. Um, next episode, I guess we'll continue the tour with Merlot and hopefully not run into Burger ever again because I hate him. Uh.